London's Royal Opera House has played host to conflict and drama for over 300 years, but it's never seen anything like the Call of Duty European Championship 2015 presented by Xbox. Hey everybody, I am Graham Boyd, Xbox Live's AC Bongos, and I'm joined today by veteran Call of Duty caster Rel and YouTube sensation and ex-pro player Benny Central to take you through all the biggest moments from the Call of Duty European Championship. So let's get straight into it. On day one, 28 of Europe's best teams faced off to book their golden ticket to the World Championships in Los Angeles later this month. Let's kick things off with two of Europe's biggest names, TCM playing Barrage and Epsilon taking on Ambition. This is the type of play you, we expected to see them you know, bring to the States when they came over. Right now, they're definitely bringing it. So effortless for them. Off the start here, it's gonna be TCM coming out to a pretty nice lead, you know, 26-12 as uh, you know, Barrage. They're going to be in this hard point though, racking up some time. TCM needs to push this together. You see a lot of players just flying in one by one. Gunch absolutely tearing it up right now with that AR in the back. He's going to go for two, oh. trying to get that one. Misses some shots right there, but you know, TCM definitely has this one pretty much in the bag. It's TCM really looking strong here. You know, when I came over, I fully expected Epsilon to be the stronger of the two teams, but TCM definitely showing why they deserve to be up there with Epsilon. This will be my third event in uh, Los Angeles, competing at Cold Champs. It'll be a bonus to win this event, to be, you know, crowned European champions, but the big tournament in LA is the main focus. This could be all over. It's Madcap, though, in a one versus one, and anything could happen. Sometimes it's luck of the draw, especially when you come out with Cold Time like that. But he is going to see it, oh and Madcap will pick up the clutch. God. A second one versus three clutch there from Epsilon. Now, Tommy, the game changer in a one versus three. Can he do it? He's going to have to jump to try and get this shot here. He's going to see a player. Gets one with a quick scope. No. Looking oh. for it. No, he's missed him. Can he get it now? He has oh to get him. My Tommy, God. the game changer. One left to go in a one versus three. Vapes is going to go for the safe one. It's gone. It's clear. Two have gone for oh, the intercept and it's caught. Tommy will grab that one and will shut down Ambition's hope of taking this map. And it's going to be Epsilon with a swift 3-0. Yep, now heading down here. We've won every European event on this game. Uh, and uh, then uh, in Epsilon won uh, a lot of Lanovitz last year, so we're confident. So there we go, as predicted, TCM and Epsilon sweeping their opponents and booking those tickets to Los Angeles. Rel, did we expect anything else? Well, Epsilon and TCM have been the dominant powerhouses in European competitive Call of Duty for such a long time now. They've proven themselves over and over again, and going up against the competition on Saturday, uh, it was kind of a breeze for them. They swept them away. Jurd and Josh went absolutely massive multiple times, and I think everybody was expecting this to happen. Benny, dominant performances, but was there anything you saw from TCM and Epsilon that they probably need to work on before the World Champs? There was only a couple things, like I think concentration was a small factor, I thought they dropped a couple maps that they shouldn't have, but the major thing I think they need to work on is uplink, because they were consistently missing throws that they shouldn't be missing, and especially against top competition that they're going to be playing against in the World Championships in Los Angeles, they have to be making those shots, they've got to be getting those one point plays, which could make a big, big difference in the grand scheme of things. Okay, so with the two favourites safely through, let's turn our attention to many people's pick of the qualifying matches. Millennium are usually flying the flag for France, but this year have a UK lineup. They faced off against an Inform Infused. That is it, he's been practicing so hard for this tournament. Oh, snapshot, and it's paying off. Advantage now to Millennium, and they need this round back. He's gonna see, and he has managed to get it. It's now gonna be dominating a one versus three. He's gonna see him, down he goes, and Millennium will put a point on the board. Yeah. Millennium one versus three, sees one. one. He's gonna see a second one above him. Can he make the kill? No. Millennium get another round back. Oh. I think they've seen him. I think they've seen him. They're closing in, surely. Can he get away? He's put the bomb down. He's been shot. He has managed to dip. He has got away. And they're going to trade him, surely. Raided. No, down he goes. Infuse will win. Loser goes home empty handed. Winning team goes to LA. Obviously, we put in so much effort uh, online, practice and stuff like that. We came on empty handed. Um, absolutely devastated. Well, this was billed as the match of the day. Did it live up to the hype? Yeah, well, I was fortunate enough to actually cast over this game myself. It was a very, very exciting one to watch, and I know a lot of people were looking forward to it back home. It went right down to the final map, a narrow 3-2 victory for Infuse secured their place in LA to compete at the Call of Duty World Championships, and it really could have gone either way. And Benny, you could see the disappointment on Marky B's face at the end of this match. How do you rate his performance? 
Yeah, it's a real shame that Marky's not actually going to be competing at the Call of Duty World Championships at the end of the month because he is one of the biggest names in European Call of Duty. And I think he was the stand-up performer for Millennium as well. He was consistent throughout the whole series um, and I think he can go away being really happy with his overall performance. But for me, the big turning point in that game was on map two in Search and Destroy and Riot when Jake managed to miss a load of shots and ended up getting ninja defused, uh, which kind of led to Infused coming back into the game. Yep, a real shame for Millennium, but congrats to Infused. Next up, with Gataga on the lineup, Vitality X brought the French Call of Duty fans out in force, but Twitter followers don't get you to Los Angeles. First, Vitality had to get past Nevro's eSport. Let's take a look. Nevros are actually making some good plays here. Yeah, Nevros have been quite dominant, and maybe they've come back. Uh, maybe, sorry, Uplink is their game type. You can see Kirby nice. picking up a two-piece and the dunk with a two-point. Can he make the three? He's not going to do that. Gataga's going to shut him down. I mean, we're going to have to see some clutch plays here from Nevros to bring this out of the bag. I was talking about the fact that this map is very open and it's going to be high scoring, and you can see already one point either side. And the other European teams competing in this event, they should be a little bit worried. Yeah, I mean, to come out here and 3-0 another team, that's something that uh, is something to be proud of. Securing their spot in Los Angeles, risking oh, with the three-piece. He's just, he, he's just proving a point right now. Is it important to you to be representing France in these finals? Yeah, yeah it's very important for me as I, we've got a big, big, big nudge community behind us and I want them to be proud of us. So Rel, Vitality X struggled a little bit in online qualifying. Do you, do you think they've sorted their form out? They did have a tough time trying to qualify for the European Championship, but they absolutely dominated Nevros to qualify for their position in LA. They did have a lackluster performance on the Sunday, but I am expecting some big things from them. Benny, do you think Gataga has something to prove on the world stage? See, I personally don't think he has anything to prove because at the end of the day, Gataga is one of the most decorated players in Call of Duty history. He's been a bit quieter in the past couple years compared to earlier in his career, but I think the Call of Duty World Championships is a great opportunity for him to show himself on the world stage and prove that he's a top level player. Thanks, gents. Next up, let's turn our attention to the German qualifiers. Now, with Kivi and Gun Elite on the roster, the German Fab Gaming team brought tons of champs experience to London. They faced off against Team Next Gen. I don't know if we're going to see any more captures. It's going to be Gun Elite who goes for the final point, and he gets it. Oh, well played. Gun Elite does get that last one in. That's going to be 2-0. Great play to get across there because he knows it's an easier shot from here. And here you go, out the doors, jump up, down. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, 6-1. Now to them. Oh, and he gets the kill as well. Fuga does go down. Fab are going to LA. They take the series 3-0. Yeah, we won 3-0. It was, um, S&D was kind of close. We were like shaking and stuff, but I think our respawn game was pretty good. And yeah, I'm proud of the team. Now, Kivy and Gun Elite are names that we've been talking about in the European Call of Duty scene for years. Do you think they've got what it takes to show up in Los Angeles? I think they've got what it takes, but the question is, are they actually going to show up? Because in previous years, they've never actually shown and proven that how good they are mm. on a global stage. Though, at the European Championships, Kivy had the second highest overall kill-death ratio for the entire tournament, so they kind of have a chance. It'll be interesting to see what they actually do. All right, so Fab Gaming, booking their spot in Los Angeles. And let's take a look at all 14 European teams who'll be heading to the World Championships. Rel, any surprises in there for you? Well, all the teams that have qualified are what we would expect. What was a big surprise for me was Team Finland. They actually placed in the top four of all the European teams that competed and looked very, very strong. And I think a lot of people had wrote them off early on. So Benny, is there enough quality within these European teams to really compete with the best at the World Champs? Almost definitely. TCM and Epsilon proved it over the weekend how good they actually are. Josh performed consistently throughout the whole tournament, was a standout performer for me. Um, Jerd for TCM as well. All they really need to do is work on their uplink, make sure they're making those throws and don't miss those shots because that costs them a lot of points during the European competition. They can't be doing that against top US opposition. All right, so with plane tickets booked, the qualifying teams turned their attention to a $10,000 prize pool, seeding points for the world champs and the coveted title of Call of Duty European Champions. And after a packed day of action, as expected, TCM and Epsilon found themselves face to face in the final. If 30 seconds left, they shouldn't really rush this. And Gunshi, he's going to get eyes on it, but haven't seen that kill come in yet. And oh, Josh oh is going to get a ninja, ninja defuse. defuse in round 11. Oh. I mean, Jerd in the hill right now, trying to do some work for TCM, trying to make that comeback. You know, after having that 
great series. And the last one they just had that semifinals against Aware. You figured they would come out, you know, feeling pretty good. They were shooting hot. Oh! They looked good, actually. Two kills right there out of Josh. Massive play. It's a very nice flag route. Riot Tommy, all he needs to do is hold on to this. It's going to be Moose, really the last chance for TCF. Moose gets one. He's going to see Tommy there, and he's got players against him. Well, he is outnumbered. He's looking for it. He is going to go down. No players there for the team of TCM, and Epsilon will be the European champion. It's insane, like, having to wait three, four years to actually attempt to qualify for LA and then come in this weekend, qualifying for LA and winning the regionals. It's just an insane feeling, and I can't express it. There you have it. Epsilon are your Call of Duty European champions 2015. Rel, Epsilon out of the blocks really fast there on hard point. Oh yeah, and I mean a lot of people were surprised by this because TCM have been so dominant against them online when competing on hard point, uh, but Epsilon turned up on the day. But Benny, into search and destroy, incredibly close there. It was so close, 5-5 five, five, and one of the most gutsy plays that you can, you can make in those kind of moments. Um, Josh went down for the ninja defuse. 3v3, um, and they just got away with it. It was just such a sneaky little play, and it ended up winning them the game. So Epsilon looking like they might actually sweep TCM, but everything changed in Uplink, right? Oh yeah, the 3-0 was within their grasp, but some huge plays from Jurd. He actually got every single capture in that game, so some massive plays by him. And then on to capture the flag. A very different kind of round, quite strategic, right? Yeah, Epsilon opened up we were using majority ARs, which kind of slowed the pace of the game down. TCM weren't able to get right in their faces, but it made it difficult to capture the flag. So when they were getting to the capture point, weren't able to win those gunfights in those close proximity areas, which ended up making it a very, very tense finish to the game. Okay, so Epsilon are our European Championship team, but let's talk about players. Who are your picks from the weekend, Rel? Well, there's got to be two for me. I would start with Kivi from Fab Gaming, the German team. He was very, very strong. We touched upon his kill-death ratio throughout the entire tournament before. But each game he was playing, he was racking up so many kills. So very, very positive play from him. But we've got to give it to someone who was in the grand final, and that would be Jurd. Jurd had played consistently well throughout the championship, even putting up 50 kills in some of the hard point games. And I would have to give him my MVP. And Benny, who's your picks? I'm going to go with Quicker, just because he played so well in the Infused Millennium match, which was one of the closest matches of the entire tournament. Pulled out a, I think, 12 kills in the final game of Search and Destroy, helping them win the series. Crucial. And then I'm going to have to go for another player that was in the grand final, Josh. Just played consistently well throughout the entire tournament. Couldn't really pick anything that he did wrong, um, so I'd, my MVP would be Josh. So some incredible individuals over the course of the weekend. But does a European team really have what it takes to be world champions? Well, in the previous Call of Duty World Championships, we haven't put on too much of a good show. In Call of Duty World Championship 2014, not a single European team placed in the top eight. And in the 2013 one, only two of them breached into there with an eighth and fifth place finish. However, I would say we have some of the best teams representing us now. TCM and Epsilon have some of the strongest lineups they've had for quite some time. I think we're going to put up a very good fight. Benny, can you see it happening? It's going to be close. It depends whether or not Epsilon turn up how they did in the final. They can't be letting those small mistakes come into play. If they do that, I think we've got a really good chance. Well, gents, I hope you are both right. Thank you, Rel. Thanks, Benny. And thank you to all of you for watching. It was Call of Duty's weekend at the opera, and the action definitely hit all the right notes. Next up, Los Angeles for the Call of Duty World Championships 2015, presented by Xbox from March the 27th to the 29th. We'll see you there.